Hey, it's great to have you guys gather together in Life Group, especially as we're starting into a new year. Gathering together with others is so important because we don't ever want to fight alone. We are talking about the warrior, and I pray that this message series would inspire all of you to recognize that Christianity is not a playground, it's a battleground. We battle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities of this dark world. So in this message series, we're gonna see that Jesus wasn't just a meek and mild guy that played with lambs and let kids crawl up in his lap, but when he returns, he returns really making war against the enemy, um, taking back the ground that Satan's tried to take for years and years and years. And ultimately, the good news is our warrior, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, he wins the war. We're gonna dive into more specific questions about the warrior, but to start things off, it's a new year, and hopefully you wanna change something in your life for the better to become more like Christ, to become more generous, um, maybe to get in better shape, to honor God with your temple, whatever it is, you've probably got a New Year's resolution. If you don't, think fast, because I'm about to ask you what it is. I'd love for you to go around the room and talk about what's one thing that you're trying to change in your life this year. For me, generally, I'm adding something. I'm adding a discipline. This year, I'm cutting back. What I've recognized is over the years, I've added and added and added and added. And the truth is, there are very few things that I do that really make a big, big difference. And those few things matter more and more and more. So I'm cutting back and eliminating a lot of the little things, some of the smaller things, some of the things I've just done because I've always done them before. So I'm aggressively pruning. If you don't clean out your closet, it will eventually be overrun. That's kind of the way my life is right now. This year, instead of adding, I'm cutting back. Go ahead and take a moment, pause this, go around the room and talk about what's the one thing you're working to change this year? All right, let's dive into the next question. And in the first week, we talked about really two qualities of every warrior. We know we're talking specifically to men, but the truth of the matter is that women, they can fight too and need to fight. We all have fight in us that we need to win. We talked about the two big qualities. One is that we have someone to protect. The second thing is we have a kingdom to advance. You may want to take a moment and reread Nehemiah chapter four, verse 14. You may even read a few verses before that just to fully get the context. But what I love about this is you see Nehemiah really with the heart to protect uh, the people that he cares about. And he talks about who he's going to fight for. I'd love to know who you're fighting for. There's someone to protect. Who is it in your life that you really feel called to protect? Now, let me tell you what I know you're probably gonna say if you're married, you probably really wanna protect your spouse. If you have children, I certainly hope you wanna protect your children. And those are really good answers, so you can start there. But hopefully, God will give you a heart that goes beyond your home because we serve a big God and he wants to use us to make a big difference in people's lives. My wife, Amy, has a real heart to protect and nurture women coming out of human trafficking and prison and abusive situations. And the more I've been around her and some of these amazing women who are being healed and becoming incredible warriors, my heart has grown to protect them. I have a real heart to guard and protect, honestly, all women, single moms, um, especially those who are coming out of a difficult situation. And then the church is my heart, meaning as I am a shepherd underneath the good shepherd and my church is my flock, I really want to do everything I can to preach God's word in a way that impacts your life so you can overcome the temptations of the evil one, the distractions of uh, the, the liar that tries to take you off of God's purpose. And so that's really who I'm trying to protect. I believe every single one of you, God has given you a heart of a warrior. There's someone to protect, someone that you're going to guard against the, um, the forces of this dark world. And so let's go ahead and talk about that. Certainly those closest to you, but maybe God might give you a heart for those beyond. Let's take a moment and talk about it. You're the heart of a warrior. Who is it specifically God is calling you to help protect? All right, let's dive into the third question, and this is where the rubber meets the road. We always try to have some kind of application at this point. We've talked about this. God has created you with the heart of a warrior, meaning there's sometimes someone you're gonna protect 
There's a kingdom to advance. The kingdom's not your own. We're trying to just make a difference in the lives of other people. Now, as warriors, how do we do this? Well, sometimes you throw a punch, meaning sometimes you stand up for what's right, you fight back, you get involved, you may get a little bit messy. Sometimes you have to get involved. Jesus did this. He mixed it up with the Pharisees at times. One time he threw over a table. He called the Pharisees some names that were pretty rough. Sometimes you throw a punch. Sometimes you turn a cheek. You have to have the wisdom to know, I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw a punch. I'm going to show mercy. I'm going to show grace. Sometimes you pray a prayer. Some of the most important battles that we fight, we actually fight on our knees. What I want to do is, however you're going to fight it, maybe throwing a punch, maybe turning a cheek, maybe praying a prayer, maybe enlisting other warriors to stand with you when you don't feel like you have the strength to stand. What I want to do is talk about your biggest battle. What is it right now? As a warrior, there's a battle to fight. There's a mission to complete. There's something that God is calling you to do, something you're wrestling with, something you're fighting. What is the battle you're fighting, and how is it you're fighting? What is that battle you need to win? Um, in my family, there's a lot going on. We always have the mission of the church. We always have spiritual opposition. We always feel slightly overwhelmed. Right now, we've been battling with health issues of people that we love. Um, I'm of the opinion, most likely, that if our enemy can't get to me directly, he's going to get to people that I love because that weighs on me oftentimes even more than my own life does. These are battles we're fighting. We're fighting with good advice. We're fighting with diet. We're fighting with supplements. We're fighting with prayer like you wouldn't, um, you couldn't believe. We're fighting. This is a battle we're fighting, and we believe with the help of Jesus, we will win. What's your fight? What's your battle? Let's take a time. Take time to go around the room and talk about it, and then make sure you leave time to pray because that's how we fight our real battles. Guess what? You're a warrior. You're the heart of a warrior. God has called you, equipped you to fight. Sometimes you throw a punch. Sometimes you turn a cheek. You always kneel to pray. We're going to take time to pray. It's the battle you're fighting, and how are you fighting it? <laughs>